So we are going to see that the last type that we have of a tapered pipe is the one that is referred to as an angled tapered pipe. So we want to see questions whereby we'll be calculating the water pressure in an angled uh, tapered pipe. That means it is at a certain angle that is uh, it is uh, just, just like an incline, right? You remember those things that you have in your dynamics at a certain angle. That is the condition that you're simply having in that case. So just like the previous case, I just want us to consider like uh, what exactly are you supposed to work with here? Uh, remember, this is the application of our Bernoulli's theorem which states that, all right, I'm going to just write it here before we look into our diagram. Remember, we said our Bernoulli's theorem can be given as a P1 over the density times the gravitational acceleration plus the velocity at the inlet, which is V1 squared, over 2 times G plus H1 is equal to, this will be P2 on this side. Uh, everything remains as it is. This will be a V2. Uh, squared over uh, 2g and this will be h2. So let's consider what we are given when it is an incline. So on an incline, you're going to see that the pressure that you're considering, depending the diagram, this will be your smaller uh, part and this will be the bigger part as we can see with the floor. So that means at the inlet, we are having a smaller diameter when it is given like this, we're having a smaller diameter. And this side, you'll be having a bigger diameter. So here we're going to have the inlet pressure. And this side, you're going to talk of P2, which is at the outlet. The area that you talk about here is A1, which is equal to pi d squared over 4 from the smaller diameter. And the area that we shall be talking about here, which is A2, is pi d squared over 4 from the bigger diameter. All right. Then in terms of the height, when it is at, at an incline, the height at the inlet, which is your H1, is taken at zero, just like that part when we talked about um, uh, when we're dealing with uh, a vertical uh, tapered pipe. Remember, on a vertical tapered pipe. So you use the same condition. So it is only for a horizontal where we have H1 being equal to H2. All right, so that means in this case, our H2 is the wall of this height that we are seeing here. So H2 is going to take the height that you are given, that is your H2, the height that you're given there. So in this case, we're given this height at three meters, but in a normal sense, your H2 is the H that you're given in meters. All right, so that is what you're going to have in this case. So we concluded that H1 is going to be at zero meters and H2 is going to be taken as H meters. All right, so that is what we're going to have. And in terms of the flow, uh, does not change. Q1 is going to be equal to Q2, just like what we had on all other tapered pipes that we had in terms of flow rate. And also remember that Q is the product of area and velocity. So it's going to be A1, V1 is equal to A2, V2, which is the relationship that you can also use to find the velocity, to find V1 and V2 in terms of each other. So VA1 is given as what here, pi d squared from the smaller diameter. So this is pi d squared over four. So we've got a pi d squared, the smaller diameter that you are considering there is equal to, A2 is the one from the bigger diameter. So it's pi d squared over four times uh, V2. So it's either you want to calculate V1 or you want to calculate V2. I talked about that. So to find V1, you are going to see that V1 is going to be given as, if you manipulate this, you are going to have V1 is equal to pi d squared over 4 like this times V2 over this, you divide by this. So it will be pi d squared over 4. Remember, guys, from our introduction, we had something of this nature. So therefore, at the end, V1 can be given as, uh, sorry for that, we're going to have uh, V1 as, so as you cancel this part, uh, this can be given as uh, V2 times uh, D squared over D squared. So take note about this, uh, the D that you're talking about, the D squared 
bigger one over the d squared from the smaller from the smaller one. So you have to be careful, like uh, according to what you're given. So this is your v1 in meters per second. Uh, if we were to calculate v2, it means we were going to divide here. Let's say we wanted to find v2. We're going to divide by these both sides. So meaning to say at the end, you're going to remain with v2 as this side of pi d squared over four times v1 over this. We are going to divide by what? By pi d squared over four. So that means our V2 at the end was going to be this one and this one cancels. So you are going to remain with a V1 times uh, D squared, everything over D squared. Okay, it's very sorry for that. Uh, guys, how did it, how did it go here? All right, how did it go that side? I don't even know, guys, sorry for that. So this is, over d squared like this in meters per second. So you have to consider your formulas. We talked about these formulas. Yes, we've got our V1 and V2, which are being calculated from here because say this is the product, uh, Q is the product of area and, and V, which is the velocity. So it follows that you can even have your V1 as a Q1 over area one. Remember we talked about this and also V2 from Q2 over area two, but taking a consideration that Q1 is equal to Q2, like we mentioned here, which is uh, in cubic meters per second, remember? Your flow velocity. So I think that's it. With this information, you can be able to answer any question that is given on a uh, angled tapered uh, pipe. All right, so let's consider this question that you're given here. We are given that fig 7.9 shows uh, a tapered pipe with one end higher than the other. So the other end is higher, like as we can see from our presentation there. Then water with a density of 1,000 uh, kilograms per cubic meter. So we are given the density of water there, which is 1,000. Uh, kilograms per cubic meter flows into the smaller diameter of 0 0.12. So at the inlet here, we are given a smaller diameter of 0 0.12. Uh, okay. Uh, and with a velocity of 15 meters at the inlet, there's a velocity there, which is V1, 15 meters per second under 12 kilopascal of pressure, which is P1, 12 kilopascal. So that is what we have there. Then we are given also and flows out of a larger end of the pipe with the diameter of. So at the larger end here, that's where we have got the bigger diameter of 0 0.25 meters. The inlet side of the pipe is three meters higher than the outlet side of the pipe, the, the inlet. All right, so this side that we have here is the outlet, is the, the one that is three meters higher than the inlet. That's what they're trying to say there, which is this one. So H2 will be equal to H, which is three meters. All right, calculate the pressure exerted at the outlet end of the pipe, meaning say we're supposed to calculate P2. We do not know the value of P2. So how are we going to find the value of P2? Let us go back to our formula of the Bernoulli's theorem. Remember our formula. So we are going to have our formula in this case. Let us try to see if we are going to win from that formula. Remember it's P1 over density times gravitational acceleration, V1 squared over two times G plus H1 is equal to P2 over rho G plus V2 squared over two G plus H2, just like that. All right, so let us consider this and see uh, what are we given? Uh, we are supposed to find the pressure, calculate the pressure exerted at the outlet end of the pipe, at the outlet, meaning say we're talking about P2. So that means we are supposed to have P2. P1 we are given, remember at the inlet, uh, P1 is given. So we have got these, these, this, V1. We also have V1, all right? We have this, we have this, we have this, we have this, we have this. We do not have V2. So this one, we do not have totally V2. So to find V2 is either you were going to use the, the part of uh, calculating the area 
uh, this is that guys, it's, it's up to you. Or you're going to use this formula here. Remember, I said you can use this V2 is Q2 over area, where Q2 can be calculated from Q1, which is area times V1. You have to calculate. Uh, I, I, I had that example if you consider when we had uh, on a horizontal tapered pipe. So I'm not going to talk about that. I'm just going to use this one, which is direct, guys, because we are given V1, B we have at the inlet, and also D we have at the outlet. So we can calculate V2 from there. So the first thing, calculate V2. All right. So let us calculate V2. So from this formula, we are stating that V2 is given as V1 times D squared over D squared. This is what we have. That is V1, the velocity that we have at the inlet in this case. All right, so at the inlet, our V1 is 15 meters per second. We have got the diameter and also the diameter at the outlet. All right, so V1, uh, 15 meters per second. So that means we're going to have something like this. V2 is a uh, uh, V1 that is going to be 15 times. So there we need D, which is the diameter at the inlet. This is D, the diameter at the inlet. Uh, that is 0 0.12 meters. Take note in meters. So it's going to be 0 0.12 squared. Everything over D squared. So D squared is the diameter that we have at the exit, which is this one, 0 0.25, the bigger diameter there. So that means we're going to have 0 0.25 squared. So this one is a direct formula. If you are to consider this, you're going to see that this one is a direct formula. Yes, you can use that other formula of the flow rate over uh, the area in that case. So the flow rate, you calculate it from the inlet because at the inlet, that's where you have got the, everything there. You've got the diameter, the velocity, everything is there. So you can use that to calculate Q1, which is equal to Q2. Then you now calculate uh, the V2. That's it. All right, so if you're considering this formula, your V2, which is the velocity, was going to be 3.456. Uh, that is in meters per second. So that is your velocity there. All right, so we have the velocity, but that is not the part of the question. It is something that is helping us to calculate the pressure at the end. So having this velocity, which is V2 of uh, 3.456 meters per second, let us now apply this so we now have this so as you can see we can calculate p2 we have got everything there we have got everything p1 everything we have so our p1 the pressure which is 12 kilopascal that is 12000 so this is going to be let me just change here so that's 12000 everything over the density of 1000 for water uh times the gravitational acceleration plus V1, which is we are given at the inlet, the velocity V1 squared, that is 15 squared over two times uh, 9,81. Plus remember we said H1 is equal to zero at the, at the inlet. So this is equal to P2, which is the pressure that you're supposed to calculate density times gravitational acceleration, just like the previous case, uh, that is 1000 times 9,81. All right, so this is 9,81 like this. All right, plus V2 is the one that we calculated here. Remember, that is the purpose there because it was a missing value. So we now have the V2, 3.456. So you're going to substitute this, substitute this in place of V2. So this is 3.456 squared. All right, everything over two times the gravitational acceleration of 9,81 plus H2, remember H2 is equal to the height, the total height that you're given H, which is three meters, which is the height that you're given there. So that's it. We can be able to calculate in this case, uh, P2. So simplify what you have on the left-hand side. So just have, uh, just obtain a single, a single term there single number there. So that is going to be 12,691 is equal to. So this, like I said, you can just leave it as P2, everything over, you multiply these two, so you're gonna have 9,810 plus 
you simplify the remaining part, this one. So if you simplify the remaining part, this will be 3,609. Uh, so let us transpose this to the left-hand side so that it becomes a negative there. Uh, so as you can see, it's now a repetition from the other questions that we had. So that will give you 9,082 is equal to P2 over 9,810. So to find P2, you can simply cross multiply. Well, this is same like over one. So just cross multiply. One times P2, that's P2 is equal to these two. They multiply 9.08, uh, 9.082. It multiplies 9,810. So that's it. You've got your P, uh, P2 at the end, which is 80, 89,000. So that was 89,094,42 Pascal which is the same as kilopascal if you divide by 1000 it was going to give you 89,094 so this is a 094 kilopascal all right so you can have your answer in kilopascal or you can even uh leave the the answer in the previous case that is just in pascal so these are the typical questions guys these are the typical questions uh mostly they just uh, swift from what you're given. Sometimes they give you something that you need to use, which is the same throughout. Uh, sometimes they need you to use another formula. So can you go through these formulas? Uh, the moment you go through these formulas, you see that you'll be able to answer any question that you're given. Only that you are able, are you able to manipulate? Are you able to manipulate your formulas to answer the specific question that you're given there. So these are the typical questions. More to come from Mesoamerican Motives till we meet again.